For most of set 3, everyone has primarily utilized two leveling strategies, fast 8 and slow rolling. With the introduction of patch 10.9, we started to see some hype roll as well. We all know how insane these compositions can feel. We see the 6 team synergies hitting their stride at level 8 every game, or we see a ton of 3 star units in stage 3 from the hyper and slow rollers. But what if I told you that none of these playstyles are the go-tos for the best players right now? Introducing Polt, a StarCraft player who recently started streaming teamfight tactics. He's almost won half a million dollars from StarCraft according to Liquidpedia, and has won many tournaments in his highly successful career. His first claim to fame was when he defeated Boxer, a StarCraft legend, so we know he means business. After serving in the military and retiring from StarCraft 2, his next conquest was teamfight tactics. You may have noticed a shift in the leaderboards recently in North America. Delicious Milk has reclaimed rank 1, and we see that Polt is currently sitting at rank 4. Many of the mech players that dominated the top half of this leaderboard are falling down to maybe 8th or 9th place now. Before we get into why this is, let's check out Polt's profile. Polt comfortably held rank 1 around May 4th when he was above 1500 LP. Many top streamers were wanting to know how he played, and he finally revealed his tactics with his first stream on May 5th. After watching around 6 hours of his gameplay that day and 6 more throughout the week, the secret was out. If you thought hyper roll or slow roll or fast state was the only way to play, Polt quickly proves that wrong. If you thought that the early game didn't matter and that health wasn't important, he would also disagree. Polt adopted an innovative playstyle that involves aggressive leveling and extreme adaptations. Let's get into how he plays now. Normally in the early game, we learned that we should level if we think we can win streak. We've also had mismatched socks. The set 2 rank 1, Coach Becca recently saying how he almost never levels before Krugs. At this point, you leveled here, which is really weird to me. Uh, uh, I definitely no, wouldn't have leveled no, here. No, no, no. But, but you, are you leveled here? What? You leveled here? And you put in Poppy 1. Oh yeah, because I was taking so much damage. No, but you're not I, actually taking that much damage. I know, I, I, think, I think I was just panicking. It's just really nervous. So I'm yeah, just you're like, probably just really nervous. Yeah. But I, in general, never level before the... Uh, before I know, the I know. That's something I never do, too. That's just something I don't do when I'm playing. Holt quickly counters this by always pre-leveling on stage 2-3 over here. Pre-leveling at the stage has never happened before on a consistent basis before now, guys. So if this is your first time hearing this, you need to be paying attention as to why he's doing it and how. If you don't know what pre-leveling is, pre-leveling is spending gold on experience but not actually leveling up on that round. Instead, the player passively levels up on the next round. For example, in stage 2-3, if you've never leveled before over here, you'll be level 4 at 0 out of 10 experience. What Polt does is he presses a level up button twice, putting him at 8 out of 10 experience, and since we gain 2 experience every round, he'll be level 5 after carousel. Now, you guys must be wondering, why, why on earth is he doing this? Why is he losing a gold on interest? Because he could have just sat at 10 gold and gained 1 interest income. First, Polt values his health total more than anything else. When asked about this, he just said, It's just 1 gold. I don't really care. You always see him going for strong early game units such as Ionic Spark and Red Buff. Leveling early coincides with this notion where he plays the strongest board possible. Second, he values getting a higher champion roll rate. After every level, you get access to stronger units. Polt's adaptive playstyle allows him to use any 4 cost carry, which means that earlier access to 4 cost units allows him to power spike much faster. The next thing we see Polt do is that he always levels up to level 6 by 3-2. Note, if he is on a win streak, he'll actually level up on 3-1. After leveling, he rolls in a high percentage of his games to complete pairs or find 4 costs. Next on stage 3, he'll level up to level 7 after carousel if he's win streaking or if he has a ton of gold. If not, he'll wait to go to level 7 on stage 4-1. The general rule here is that he always stays around 20 to 40 gold. For example, if he has 55 gold after carousel on stage 3, at that point in the game, it only costs 28 gold to level, so he'll generally level up to level 7 since he'll still be above 20 gold. You'll rarely see him above 50 gold. In the late game, he generally goes to level 8 at stage 5-1. This is generally like a late level 8 compared to what we're used to, and since he rolls during level 6 and 7, it's only natural that he hits level 8 a little later. The champions he prioritizes the most are Kale, Aurelia, Cho'Gath, Jinx, and Wukong. If you haven't noticed a pattern yet, he likes 4 cost units. Another unit he plays a lot is Blitzcrank because he complements both Cho'Gath and Wukong and Chrono Brawler. Polt has a low risk playstyle with the primary goal of preserving health. He will not hyper roll, he will not slow roll, and he will rarely go for 3 star 4 cost units such as Jinx or Kale. 
If you look at his match history, you may notice that he rarely plays the same comp, yet uses the same champions every game. He simply plays whatever he hits and completes his team with minor synergies. All in all, this leads to a ton of top 2s and 3s, but very few wins compared to other players. This can be evidenced by his 16% win rate compared to the higher ones of Soju at 23.5, Milk at 26.2, and Sox at 24. While Polt is no longer rank 1, I'm guessing this is partly due to him starting his stream. Playing on stream is completely different from playing on your own. Streamers are often unfocused and need to pay attention to their viewers instead of the game. Very few players actually play on their top ranked accounts on stream. Another reason why he might not be rank 1 anymore is because we likely have some players adopting to his playstyle and learning to play around him. Perhaps people are even contesting his units more. For example, last week he was playing a lot of Jinx, but if you look at his recent matches, he's been favoring Kale a lot more. Even after all this, Polt's rise teaches us that no one has figured out the best way to play teamfight tactics and there are many different ways to approach the game. This is why I've always suggested to players to find a playstyle that they enjoy and excel at and sticking with that. We've had many people complain in this patch about hyper roll compositions, mana printer compositions, but all I know is that these compositions are not even the main weapon of the top players. First, let's look at Milk. Here he's going for a lot of Brawler Blaster, Kale comps, Jinx comps, pretty much the same thing as Polt has been doing. He has one hyper roll game, uh, but we see no Sona mana printers and, um, okay, sorry, we see two hyper roll games out of his 10 games, which isn't really that much considering he's, he's mainly playing Kale and Brawler Blaster. Next up is Inay. He's a very strong player as well. He plays Hyper Roll once, he's playing some Jinx, he's playing some Kale. We haven't seen a Mana Printer yet, and so he's only played Hyper Roll 1 out of 10 games. The one exception to the Hyper Roll rule is probably Soju. He's played Candyland quite a bunch. Um, if we look here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 10 games with Candyland, but notice how we have no Mana Printer Sonas in these games. Uh, next up, let's go to We've already looked at Polt, but in case you guys missed it, I'll I'll show you guys here. He plays Kale here. He's playing pretty much anything he hits here. He's even playing snipers with Jin, with Kale and MF. Um, so he's really just playing anything he hits. Here we have another Kale Aurelia game, but he is he's he's still running like four pirates as well or something in this game. Um, next game we have a uh, kind of like a cybernetic game, but we have. A bunch of other units. We have a random Zin Zhao in there, a random Kassin. So as you can see, he just kind of mix and matches synergies. There's no real like one or two comps that he plays. He just kind of plays very similar units and just swaps them out depending on what he hits. Lastly, the person we'll go into is Mismatch Socks. Wow, he's been climbing a lot recently. He went from a thousand LP to all the way to 1400. Keep in mind that's really difficult at the elo he's in because his gains are much different than ours because he's literally number five on the server. Um, but let's see what he's playing. He, the first game we have him playing is some sort of Mystic Kale build. He's running four Mystic with Kale instead of four Chrono. He has two Chrono. The next game, it's kind of like the Sorcerer Gangplank build. That's been seeing some type of play, but he didn't hit the two-star Gangplank there. We have one Hyper Roll for Zaya. Uh, we have... This one's just like a Kale build, but he didn't hit the Misfortune. Uh, we have another Kale build, but this one, this time he two-starred Aurelia and Wukong. Wow, he actually got third place in a game where he ran three star Kassadin, but level one Kale in, in like a Kale build. That's kind of crazy to me, but um, I'm sure he found a way to make it work. Next up, we have another Kale build. We have another Hyper Roll. So that's two Hyper Rolls so far. No, sorry. Yeah, just two Hyper Rolls so far out of uh, 10 of his games. So again, if you guys think that Hyper Roll is dominating the meta, he didn't really do this here. He doesn't have the poppy here. He only hit the Zoe. So I'm assuming he didn't hyper roll this game either. But yeah, if you guys assume hyper roll and mana printer Sona is dominating the meta, looking at these top five players, and they they all played on this patch. So it's not like any of them took the patch off. Um, I've not seen a single mana printer here, and we've seen very few hyper rolls apart from Soju. Polt doesn't play Hyper Roll, and the rest of the players, they maybe play Hyper Roll one or two games out of their 10 games. Finally, we do have Soju with 5 out of 10, but that's really not that much, considering we're mainly seeing Kales, Jinxes, and Misfortunes. It seems like Misfortune might be the most contested legendary, because she works in both Jinx and Kale builds. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys learned more about this new player. I'll link his Twitch in the description down below, because I highly suggest you guys check out how he plays, because it's completely different from anything we've seen from other players before. Let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comments section down below. This is a video that we've never done before, so let me know if you guys enjoyed this or not by hitting the like button or even the dislike button. 
I'm looking to analyze other players more in the future so that you guys can learn more about their play styles and learn how to emulate them as well. That's it for now. I'll see you guys with the patch preview tomorrow. On a side note, I am starting a new YouTube channel where I'm going to be talking about things outside of teamfight tactics. So if you are interested in that, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below. So if that's something you're interested, you'll definitely want to check that out. But that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.